Building the Wolverine Amplifier Input Stage In this video, we're going to talk about where we left off Potentiometer Orientation R17 Heat Dissipation Filling the Vias Onboard Heat Sinks Basic Soldering Technique Including My Mistakes Input Terminals and a Quick Test of the Input Stage so in the last video we were around this point where we had some of the smaller components installed. At this stage I would strongly recommend a thorough board clean using first isopropyl alcohol on a toothbrush followed by a circuit board cleaner to flush away the flux and any gunk from soldering the smaller parts. This will be helpful later on when we install the transistors since there will be less flux to clean at that point. When you install your potentiometers or pots, don't forget to install them in the direction that you expect to be able to adjust them when the amplifier is mounted in your case. If your amplifier is mounted parallel to your heatsink, like I plan to, I suggest mounting this potentiometer with the screw uh, upwards or downwards depending on which way around your boards are going to go in your case. So consider which way up the screw adjustment needs to be and do a trial fit if you can. If your amplifier is mounted perpendicular to the heatsink, so at 90 degrees, you should consider getting potentiometers which have the adjustment screw on top so that you can adjust them when the case is partially assembled, when the lid's off. So last week my soldering station started playing up so I purchased a new one. Uh, you can see the condition of that particular soldering, soldering iron in the last video. So I've got a nice new one. Uh, always nice to have a clean soldering iron tip. So this is just a reminder. Don't forget to mount R17 2mm above the PCB. So R17 is this guy here. So at this point, don't forget to fill the vias with solder for the input cap over here. Bridge the big cap gap if needed. So this guy here, bridge that with a little piece of wire and some solder. Don't forget to fill the vias for the TMC area, C12, careful with that one, and the negative feedback trace, which is here, and G2 over here. So before you solder the potentiometers in the board, uh, I found a neat little trick. If you use one of these cheap testers, uh, you can find the midpoint pretty easily in about two minutes. And on the left, you can see before I tweaked it on the right hand side after it's balanced. Makes it pretty easy to see which way around uh, things are. So hopefully that helps. The R25 is the one shown here. So at this point, let's go ahead and mount the TO92 transistors. So these are thermally coupled matched pairs. Start with some thermal paste. A tiny amount will do. Carefully place them together. Hold them together like that. So slice a piece of heat shrink and place it over the pair. Then warm it up with a heat gun. You really don't need much heat for this, so you don't want to damage anything. Careful not to burn yourself, and tweezers help with this uh, from experience. <laughs> so just take it easy with this step. Place the pair in the board, solder it in. Take care of this step, just take your time. So install all the pairs. I use tweezers just to gently push them down to the right height. So don't forget to solder in the test point TP0, like I did. There it is there. Very useful test point. That's the ground at the input. So time to assemble the current source number one heatsink. I use self-adhesive silicon insulating pads. 
So put your 2SA1381E, if you can get your hands on it, uh, in this way. 2SC3503E on the other side. Use a flat washer and a nut, like so. Here's the finished product. Install CCS1 heatsink assembly and solder it in. Here's the top down view. So here's a quick example of soldering in the constant current source transistors. This uh, example here is not the best, but bear with me. So clean soldering iron tip, warm up the pad, add some solder, wait for a second for a puff of smoke and the pad to be full, let go. Okay, we'll do that again. Clean soldering iron tip, hold on the pad for a second, bring in some solder, wait for it to fill up you might see it drop down a little bit T tiny puff of smoke let go there you go and if you flip the board over you should see a nice flow through to the other side realistically that's way too much solder so unfortunately I had to rework some of these solder joints a little bit later down the track um, but, you know, if you take your time, you can get a good result if you don't go overboard with the solder like I did. So here's what it looks like in the end. If you have a look here, that's a little bit closer to what you want there. That's the way you want it to look, not a big blob of solder. So I added way too much solder, as you could see, so I ended up removing some so as not to affect the creepage and clearance between the pads and the tracks. If you have a look above, you can see what the finished product should look like. So let's assemble the VAS and CCS number 2 heatsink. VAS stands for Voltage Amplification Stage, and CCS stands for Constant Current Source, by the way. I use self-adhesive silicon insulating pads again. These are the TO126 size. I started by tapping the heat sinks and I tried to use 3 mil aluminium. Turned out reasonably neatly after some sanding and deburring. I decided to use a small lug for the earth connection and to provide a little bit of mechanical stability for that heat sink. Use the little a shake proof washer there's the lug you know, a little trial fit so far so good it's been nice and sturdy so I soldered a, a component leg into the lug later on I changed to 1.6 millimeter thick aluminium as per the build guide I'd strongly recommend using 1.6 millimeter aluminium as the VAS and its CCS will thermally stabilize much more quickly due to the reduced heatsink mass. So three mil is a bit too thick in my opinion and you sort of run out of room. So that's what the heatsink looks like roughly. This is how you install it in the board. You can see that pin in the center going in the little hole there for the ground. That's it soldered in. I cleaned up those solder joints again afterwards. So at this point, check there's no continuity between the G2 heatsink ground and the transistor legs of Q11 and Q13. So there should be no beep. Then check that the heatsink does have continuity with G2, which is the heatsink ground. There should be a beep. All right. So it should look something like this now, starting to come together. Here's my input cap. I chose a Vishe 1848C MKP 10 microfarad capacitor of a C1, also known as Big Bertha. You can see it's within its specification. So we're getting somewhere now. 
I don't know if you noticed some of those uh, solder joints have been tidied up a little bit. All right, so here's the input connector. I plan to use a higher quality input terminal at a later date. So at this point, I decided to change to 1.6 millimeter thick aluminium for the VAS slash CCS2 heatsink, just to make my life really difficult. That's the finished product. So I used the same sort of method. However, I stripped the threads since it was only 1.6 millimeters thick. After that, I used nuts instead and all of the fasteners were three millimeters. So at this point, time to clean up the PCB. So give it a scrub with isopropyl alcohol first, then rinse it thoroughly with circuit board cleaner after scrubbing it with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, the circuit board cleaner will flush all the rubbish off. You can just repeat this as necessary till it's all clean. So you can see, you know, all the gunk on there. Here's a bit of an example. So give it a spray with isopropyl alcohol everywhere. Really douse it in it. Give it a thorough scrub with a toothbrush. Just be gentle not to uh, squash your heat sink or anything silly like that. We can get the camera in focus. There's the circuit board cleaner. And go nuts with this because this is going to rinse off all the, all the junk. And you'll see it when the board gets tipped on its side. Seal the scrub. You don't want any of that on your board. Just let it rinse off. I sometimes use compressed air to uh, blow that off afterwards and that works pretty well too. So before cleaning on top you can seal the junk, after cleaning below, much cleaner. So I would really recommend don't skip this step. Here's the finished product with 1.6 millimeter thick aluminium heatsink. Here's another angle. Doesn't the layout that the Wolverine team designed look pretty great? I couldn't resist putting this on a current limited power supply to try it out. I put 50 milliamp fast fuses in series just to be safe. Here's the test setup. Well, it's alive. The DC offset is nice and stable, easy to set. And the current source, CCS1, is also working well. It's easy to adjust. That's enough of a sneak peek for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comment section. For my next video, I plan to talk about testing the input stage and continue the Wolverine build, moving on to the main board. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget the subscriber competition. Leave a comment if you want to be in the draw and leave your DIYaudio.com username in the comment section. Bye for now.